happy Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for our weekly Wednesday live stream. And uh, we are so excited to be here. My name is Bo, and I'm joined by the lovely Shantae today. Hello, everyone. And as you may have already seen, or heard. today is a little <laughs> bit. We won't talk about that. Today is a little bit different. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take one ear off so I can hear myself. Today is a little bit different from uh, our usual live stream. We've been doing the Let's Plays. We've been doing the Workshop Wonderlands. Um, but as you may or may not know, we have a wonderful partnership a with San stream. Diego Zoo. Yeah. And of course, if you, if you do not know them, they are one of the world's most famous, if not the world's most famous zoo, because they're uh, incredible in terms of their animal care and conservation. Uh, and we are super, super excited about um, our ongoing partnership. And today, uh, we are joined by husbandry behavior manager, <laughs> Nikki Boyd. Hello, Nikki. Hi, ladies. How are you? Yay, she's Very here. Good, thank you. How are you? I'm great. Hi. Lovely here in San Diego. Yes. We were just talking before, uh, if you saw before we launched uh, the stream, we showed the highlight video of when we took a trip to San Diego Zoo. Exactly. And the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. And we were just saying how, how hot it was while we were there. Yeah. Um, so <coughs> it's, uh, it's something that we're missing now that it's so cold here in England. But uh, yeah, we're very excited for the stream today. I see there's lots of people in the chat. Hello, everyone. Um, Yes, Hello. Yeah, yes. Exciting. <laughs> so basically what is going to happen uh, is we are going to chat to the lovely Nikki today. We're going to ask her all about uh, what her job entails, what it's like to, wor uh, to work for San Diego Zoo for, for such an amazing uh, zoo that does so much good work. Um, so please do put some hearts in the chat for Nikki because she is watching as well and she is seeing the chat. So make her feel nice and welcome like the Planet Zoo community that we all know and love. Um, and hopefully we will answer your question uh, during the stream today. Um, so Nikki, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about the, the history of, of San Diego Zoo and, and what it's all about. What is the philosophy of the zoo? Sure. Well, I've been lucky enough to work here for the last 28 years, believe it or not. Wow. <clears throat> Started straight out of college as a zookeeper, and now I get to run the zoo-wide animal training program and all the animal ambassador team. Oh, and okay. Just, yeah, we just had our 100th year um, in 2016, so uh, we're just over 100 years old, and um, as you had already said, yeah. we kind of appreciate the, the recognition of being world-famous San Diego Zoo. We actually didn't call ourselves world famous, but the world kind of <laughs> says that to us. We appreciate it. We work very hard to have the best habitats and the best animal care and the most progressive uh, research and animal, you know, husbandry programs that um, you can find around the world. And we certainly have a lot of colleagues around the world that have very fine facilities as well, mm. but we, we just appreciate um, all the global conservation work that everybody's doing at zoos. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Nikki, can you tell us a bit more about your, your role at San Diego Zoo? So what does a behavior hun uh, husbandry manager actually do? It sounds very interesting. <laughs> I know, it's, it's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <Basically, laughs> keep tripping over it. You know, <laughs> I, I'll get it. Yeah, I, I run the zoo-wide animal training program. And so animals um, here in managed care cooperate in their own health care, which is amazing. So we can do voluntary blood draws, we can um, do vaccinations, injections, um, we train animals for programs to um, be able to give our message about ending extinction. So this, this lovely picture of this cheetah here. Yes. We've had over 150 cheetahs born at the safari park. This is one of our cheetahs that was born there. Unfortunately, mom didn't take care of her. So she is serving a role as an animal ambassador. And that's okay. kind of my second job is running the ambassador team. So people come to the zoo. They want to learn about animals and they love to see the passion from the animal care folks. So my team... Um, bring animals out as well. So, so not only do we do training with protected contact with with you know big cats like tigers and lions and uh, all of our other species, but we also do um, free contact, which means we we go in the same space with animals and yeah. train them to come out and do programs and meet the guests, and then we can answer all their questions and and you get so much more interaction when you have an ambassador out. It's it's a lot of fun and and you saw the cheetahs running, so the cheetahs get to show off that speed that maybe not everyone can go to Africa and see cheetahs running in the wild. So yeah. we try to get natural behaviors expressed and let people see that and then get them to, you know, create that empathy. So they want to help save these wildlife um, animals and 
it's just it's it's our mission and vision to to lead the fight against extinction and and all of these animals need help there's there's less than 7000 cheetahs left in africa so oh. a lot of people don't always know that and so we're the people who can give that message to at the san diego zoo we get over 4 million people a year so it's a very oh, important wow. part of our mission and vision to educate everybody on what's going on out there in the world that maybe doesn't get to these countries and by supporting us, they're supporting the conservation. So it's an easy win for them, and it's an easy way for them to help us lead that fight against extinction. Absolutely. That's fascinating. Yeah. Cheetahs are so cool, but they are ridiculously <laughs> fast. Oh, I it's know. Crazy. Yes. <laughs> cool. And you said you have been at the zoo for 28 years, um, yes. which is an amazing amount of time. So you must have seen loads uh, already. Um, so what, what is it like working in, in, in San Diego Zoo for you? Yes. Well, you know, I started when I was five, so I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's been an amazing transition. Of course, it, I grew up in San Diego, so it was a dream awesome. job. And, and I went through a lot of college to uh, learn animal training and, and animal husbandry. And also as, as a veterinary technician, I learned a lot of the medical side. Oh, wow. um, but, you know, I've seen the changes and we're always improving. I mean, we were always, we've been known as a, as a world famous facility for many years, but it's just been great over the last, you know, couple of decades just to see the improvements. Um, yeah. And, you know, the state of the art facilities, our donors are amazing. They give us all this money. We're a nonprofit organization. So all the money we get to build new habitats is from our generous donors. And um, we're just constantly trying to think outside the box and build the most amazing space for the animals to, to live in, to thrive. You know, we have, huge successes with breeding animals we can do reintroductions we can educate the guests that come through our gates um in a very uh immersive fashion so it might feel like you're being transferred to africa or the jungles yeah. and our plant collection rivals our animal collection it's just an amazing you know atmosphere when you're you're in the zoo or the safari park yeah, I can imagine. I mean, we, we've been there. We had a fabulous time. It was, time. It was so amazing. So beautiful. It's yeah. nothing like you've ever seen before. If, if Those of you in the chat, if you ever have the privilege of, of being able to visit, there's so much space, there's yeah. so much care, there's just so much, like, love that you feel the from zoo keep the staff. It's amazing. Fascinating to listen to. Yeah. We learned so much while we were there just yes. from listening to them, and it was really interesting. Um, we're currently showing a picture of the San Diego Zoo entrance. Yes. Um, but why is San Diego Zoo so famous for its animal welfare? You know, <clears throat> we are very blessed to have some amazing staff that are on the cutting edge of mm. constantly improving animal welfare. And I mentioned thriving. One of the things that we looked at was the Animal Welfare Act. And, and um, we decided that we were going to change that to opportunities to thrive um, than the five freedoms. And so we are constantly challenging ourselves to be able to allow animals to express that species-specific behavior. So we're setting the habitats up to make that possible. We're training our staff. Wow. And then we go out and we, we lecture at conferences and we travel around the world and we, we try to educate other, you know, professional colleagues on what the, the latest trends are and how we're constantly improving the welfare. So we start here at home, you know, at San Diego Zoo or the Safari Park, and we make sure our habitats are, are world class. And then we go out and teach that to others. And um, and we learn from others, too. There are some, so many amazing facilities out there. So we're always visiting other zoos and, and getting ideas um, of the best things that have worked at other facilities. But I think combining all of those things and, and having like the largest uh, research arm allows us to have greater reach. We, we work in over 100 countries around the world doing Gosh. research projects, which is why we're called San Diego Global. We really are a global organization that works all over the world mm -hmm. and collaborates with so many. So, so I travel all over the world as well, mostly for work and everywhere I go. If I say I work at the San Diego Zoo, um, people reach out to me and they say, oh, my gosh, you know, I've been there. Or I want to go there. I've heard about it. I, I, mean, I can be in the middle of the Serengeti in Africa and someone will say, you work at the San Diego Zoo? I mean, it's wow. amazing That's that we cool. have. So we appreciate your support, too, and, and helping get that word out there and, um, you know, just getting people to care about wildlife and the yeah. planet. You know, we've got one planet. we got to take care of it. So. Absolutely. No, it's an honor to get to speak to you. Like, yeah. As we said, San Diego Zoo is one of the most revered, renowned uh, zoos in the world. And it's it's really interesting to get to speak to you today. Um, it's nice to see the similarities as well. And, and obviously the, the inspiration that our developers have taken from speaking to, to people such as yourselves, um, just about 
putting animal care at the front, at the forefront, as well as conversation and sort of what, how can we put that message in Planet Zoo without, you know, having the averse effect almost. And it's 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 a really nice balance that we've managed to strike thanks to thanks to your help. And there's a couple of people in the chat that are talking about the lion, and it's an amazing lion. <laughs> and I just want to say, there's piece by piece building in Planet Zoo, so you can build this lion, and we want to see it. So if you do end up building this beautiful entrance, um, then do share it with us on, on social media or via the Steam Workshop. I, I know there's talented people in the chat that <laughs> are just itching to, to do that. So um, I'm sure we'll see some more uh, habitats and stuff later from, yeah. from San Diego Zoo. Um, and uh, in terms of, in terms of uh, the zoo at the moment, as it is now, um, what are some of your recent um, animal care milestones that you have achieved? Because obviously we, we, we get the newsletters, we constantly hear of the amazing work that you do, but do you have anything that you <coughs> want to share that's recent? Well, yes, of course. Um, we are so excited. Um, a lot of people know rhino conservation is, is very important, and we just had our 100th southern white rhino born. And Yay. not, yes, I know, 100. You guys got to see 99, I think. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, but cool. uh, we just recently had another little female. And it, it's just super exciting because um, as we lead the fight against extinction, we need these type of technologies. And the Nikita Khan Rhino Rescue Center is where these rhinos have been born. Yeah. And um, we're learning how to um, bring animals back from the brink of extinction. So by doing hormone therapy and artificial insemination, we have a frozen zoo, believe it or not, with yes. thousands and thousands of endangered species. And um, by learning this technology and the state of the, techno state of the art technology, we can help bring rhinos back from extinction or the brink of extinction. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the northern white rhino, there's only two left in the world, but we certainly have a lot of genetic material. So these southern white rhinos may uh, hopefully be able to help the northern white, right, white rhino from becoming permanently extinct. Right. Um, but there's so many other rhinos that need help. So this technology is helping us be able to um, learn how to breed rhinos successfully and use genetic material if we can't always have a natural breeding. We certainly focus on natural breeding whenever possible, when, but when the numbers get so critically low, of course. Um, you know, we, we can help step in and intervene because we have created this problem. You know, they're hunted and poached for that horn, which is just yeah. keratin. It's just like your fingernails. It really has no medicinal properties. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, you know, there's there's an awareness campaign that is going on in, in many, many countries. But uh, in the meantime, we're out there trying to research them in the countries they're found and um, also manage them in our facilities and help continue that breeding so that we can really, once we protect an area and have a bit place to put them, hmm. um, our goal, of course, would be to reintroduce animals back into the wild and have them for generations to come to enjoy and to protect and preserve. Um, every animal is so important to the ecosystem. So yeah. it's really important to um, preserve each species as best that we can. And and that's, that's so exciting. I mean, there's so many success stories we have, like our California condors. Yeah. You know, they were... They were almost extinct, and with our technology, we have hundreds flying free now. And so we're just, yeah, we're so proud of that opportunity to, to help bring ba animals back from the brink of extinction. So we took on this big, audacious goal of leading the fight to end extinction. We know we yeah. can't protect every single species, but, um, you know, somebody has to do it. And so we're stepping up to the plate, and we're Absolutely. saying we're going to do everything we can. So we appreciate yeah. everyone's support in that. Oh, yeah, I know you're certainly making your mark in that in that regard. If you want to know a little bit more about the, the rhinos, we, we actually did have the chance to go behind the, the scenes at San Diego Zoo and, and talk to some rhino keepers and specialists. Um, that video lives on Corrales' channel. So if you want to see the full interview that we had at San Diego Zoo, then do check out his video on Corrales' channel. It was super, super interesting. And I think he even tweeted afterwards that because of that chat that he had with, with you guys, um, rhinos are now his, his absolute favorite animal. And he, he just wanted to do like fundraising and all of that. He was so taken by the story and so impressed with, with the conservation efforts for, uh, efforts for the, the species. Um, but so that, that's, it's just that kind, of, that kind of stuff. It's just so amazing to hear. And then we're just a, a tiny cog in that, yeah. in that giant in wheel. In that video, but we were looking at little baby Edward. Little Edward. Who we saw while we were there as well. I had the absolute privilege of seeing. So uh, happy. So he was very cool sleepy watching. when we were there. Yeah, he was not He was not <laughs> interested in us. So that video was like way more active. He was He was like not. He was, I think it was a really hot day when we went there. It was incredibly so. hot. And they were, I think they were napping. So we were just kind of like... 
I think the, the keeper was sort of luring them with a little bit of food and a little bit of, uh, yes. of you know, compliments like, hello, come out. <laughs> and then the mom was obviously really protective and Edward was just like showing his little face, showing his little bum. And then he was like, I've had it now. I'm going back into the <laughs> I'm shade. I'm going to lie down. <laughs> I'm not doing this today. So. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was very impressive to, to yes. see that. So Nikki, can it's you great. tell us? Oh, sorry. What were you going to say? Oh, I was just saying it's great to see them up close and personal. Uh, to oh. me, it's like looking at a dinosaur sometimes it's this amazing <laughs> huge species that that are still they're not dinosaurs they're not extinct so let's protect them so absolutely yeah yeah they're incredibly uh, impressive for yeah sure. so i was going to ask uh, can you tell us a bit more about your fellow staff members at san diego zoo yes we have an amazing uh team of people that work here um believe it or not only about 10 percent are actually in animal care so oh. Um, but even with that number, um, we do have about 200 zookeepers here at the San Diego Zoo. Wow. And you have to remember, we have a, an entire mammal department, a primate division, entomology. So we have a huge focus on insects, which are super important. Our whole bird wow. department, our whole reptile department, who also take care of ichthology, which are fish. And mm, so great. we have very yeah specialized um, areas. And um, we also have an amazing veterinary team. So we have six veg full-time veterinarians. And we are a testing facility as well. So we always have a veterinary intern um, who's here learning from our veterinary staff how to take care of exotic animals. I mean, if you can imagine, you might be treating a hummingbird and an elephant and a snake and a <laughs> cheetah. You know, yeah. these veterinarians are amazing and they have so much to learn and to know about these animals. Absolutely. And, you know, our, our team goes in, does conservation, as I mentioned, all over the world. And a lot of times our veterinarians will go out there too because they're there's they're skilled in taking care of these rare and endangered species. And so they'll bring their expertise out to the field and help uh, field veterinarians be able to do better work. Um, and so it, we, we just, I'm, I'm so blessed. I wouldn't stay at a job for 28 years if I didn't love this team. It's like a, a giant family. And we all, I mean, my boss has been here over 45 years. It's wow. Just, That's people don't so leave. cool. Isn't it amazing that it's the longevity, that, which is, it shows what a, an amazing facility this is to work for. Absolutely. Are there, um, um, off piece a tiny little bit, but are there any animals that were born when you started that are still at the zoo? Yeah, um, you know, it depends on the species and their, their life expectancy. And of course, mm -hmm. over 28 years, it's, it's, you know, hard to remember all of them. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, the hardest part of my job is when, when they do pass away, just like if it was yeah. your dog at home. Yeah. Um, but yes, there, you know, of course, you know, our Galapagos tortoises, I can think oh. of, you know, they could live, uh, you know, 150, 200 years. So they're going to outlive all of us. But yeah. <laughs> I've, it, I used to work in the children's zoo directly and I, I raised many animals, um, either in the nursery or we try to get them back with their family groups early and often. Um, so there's an orangutan I got to raise in the nursery who's with her family group. Uh, her name's Karen. Oh, and okay. she had to have open heart surgery, believe it or not. And um, we brought in cardiologists from our pediatric uh, local hospitals. And, you know, she's wow. almost as old as I've been here. Um, so yeah. she's I, her late 20s now. And I go over and see her sometimes. And she, she came up to the glass the other day when I was over there. And the people there said, she must recognize you. And I thought, God, it's been so long since I've actually worked with her. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's just, just just an amazing relationship you get with the animals and the people over so many years but um i just I, I love the variety of species i get to work with um red pandas are one of my favorites oh, uh good I choice work... <laughs> are they adorable you're now an instant favorite with our community who also love <laughs> the red pandas <laughs> i know well i'm one of the um founding members for red panda network and the San Diego oh. Global sponsors um, conservation work in Nepal for red pandas, and so I'm on this board, and and uh, we we save them in the wild, and we we breed them in in managed care, and uh, I just love teaching people about them. Um, yeah. I we have a whole section in our gift shop on red pandas. I just went and bought <laughs> these stuff yesterday. So, um, our <laughs> so gift cute. shops are amazing. Yes, so it's it's hard to pick a favorite, but if I had to pick one, I think that would be one of my favorites. That's really cool. Solid choice. They do love the red pandas in our community. 100%. <laughs> Team red pandas is Mr. Tux. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so can you tell us, uh, so you said 200 uh, people in animal Keeper. care? 200 keepers. Oh, 200 keepers. Yeah. How many animals do they take care of? You know, it depends on the area. So um, if you're taking care of elephants, you're going to have fewer animals under your care and more people because there's a big job. 
um, if you have, you know, insects, of course, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of, you know, individual arthropods to take care of. So, um, you know, each keeper is trained in a special special area. So they have the understanding, and we call them strings. And so you might have um, a primary keeper who works five days on one string, and then the relief keepers might bounce around to a couple different strings. So one day you're taking care of rhinos and, you know, maybe five other habitats that go along with that, mm-hmm. or, um, you know, the next time you're taking care of the giraffes and all the habitats that go with that. So it helps our veterinarians to know where the animals are located and who's responsible. So if you're, you know, rhino one, they know that the, the babarusa are on the rhino string. And so, so you have set areas, but... Um, Again, you get to work with a variety of animals. Mm. Um, elephant keepers are pretty specialized, and they mostly just work with the elephants. But, um, you know, all the other strings are pretty spread out, and they, they can have multiple species. And if you're in the ambassador area, you might have birds, mammals, and reptiles on your string. So um, that's one of the reasons I loved being a children's zoo keeper was I got to work with birds, mammals, and reptiles. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. We were so taken with the uh, the keepers that helped us around the zoo because they we went to so many different animal habitats and they knew they could talk for like an hour about they every knew single one. Everything. <laughs> and I was just like, how do you? Where do you retain all these facts? This is so impressive. Really, it is really amazing. Good. And they, yeah. you know, they are very specialized um, professions. You know, a lot of people think. Oh, you know, you're cleaning up the poop or whatever. Well, that's that is part of the job, but they yeah. they have to know behavior. They have to know, um, you know, behavior modification, which is my job is to teach them, you know, training. Mm. They have to know breeding, introductions, habitat setup. You know, how to enrich the animals' lives, how to take care of the plants, how to talk to the guests. So public speaking skills come into play. Yeah. Um, they they do research projects. They you know they know um, how to watch for illness they know the disease process so zookeepers are very specialized and they um they have an amazing amount of knowledge like i was mentioning with the veterinarians Mm. zookeepers are are quite a profession many of them have their bachelor's or master's degrees they're they're very uh educated and um help a lot in that fight against extinction yeah absolutely I think everyone, when they were younger, wanted to be a zookeeper at some oh, point. Oh, yeah. Like, everybody. Oh, my dream job would be to look after cats all day long. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, I, I definitely wouldn't turn it down. <laughs> so, yes, regarding... I'm, oh, sorry, what were you going to say? I was say, I'm definitely a cat person, oh. as you saw my cheetah yes. picture. I'm, I'm a Leo, so... I grew up Same. loving lions. We're all Leos. Three Leos yeah. on the stream. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> no, I had a good vibe with people. you guys. So, <laughs> cats are, you know, my favorite. They are one of the hardest animals to train yeah. um, because they don't care what you think. They don't, you know, they they don't they do their own thing. So, but I love training them because then you know your success. You know, when you get them, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know draw blood from our tiger's tail voluntarily and he's trained to back up and let us you know it takes months to train it but they're so smart um and if you find the right motivation and you build that relationship with them you can train them to do amazing things but but it's not like some animals like bears are very very smart and they're Mm -hmm. like a dog they're eager to please and they're all usually very food motivated so they're like what do you want me to do (laughs) the cat is kind of like oh i don't know i guess i'll come over and so, so it's it's a challenge, but I love that challenge. That's really cool. And there was a specific um, uh, special thing about cheetahs that we were told about when we were at the zoo, uh, which is that they they live with with a friend, right? Because they're they're quite anxious animals. Well, some of them do, and um, I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to dispel the myth that they they're really anxious. Now, okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It's fine. It's honestly, it's kind of a new um, verbiage that we're trying to, you know get out there. So mm. we do have cheetahs and dogs. I know you're talking about our cheetahs and dogs yes. and we have um, several paired up here at the San Diego Zoo, but we, we also started working the cheetahs without the dogs and um, oh. just doing coalitions where we have two cheetahs together oh, wow. and they're doing remarkably well. Um, we love our dogs, but we want to focus on the conservation for cheetahs. Yes. But if you think of natural history of cheetah, so they're in Africa with all the apex predators. So if you're a cheetah, you've got lions trying to steal your prey, hyenas, leopards, uh, you know, even the jackals and the vultures and all the other predators out there are trying to steal your food. And so they're built for speed. They're very, we call them delicate cats. They're, they're long and lean. They don't have the jaw strength like a leopard. They, um, they're, they don't have retractable claws because mm-hmm. they have to be able to 
cleat into the ground. So their nails are, are like cleats for them to get their, that grip to go 70 miles per hour after that gazelle. And so a lot of times they do have to flee and give up their prey. And so that's where they get that flighty uh, kind of um, reputation because mm -hmm. a lot of times they lose the battle to live another day. And um, the dogs have helped them uh, have, if they're singletons, say they were rejected by their mom and they needed some companionship, which they would have from their litter mates. We supplemented dogs in that in the past. And now we're working on um, supplementing that with another cheetah. So we got a cheetah from Texas that paired up with a single cheetah from Texas that wasn't doing well, wow. paired up with a single cheetah from the safari park. And those are our two ambassadors now down here at the San Diego Zoo. And so they don't always need a dog, but if we don't have another cat to pair up with them, then sometimes we have gotten dogs for them in the past. And the dogs, you know, they, they love everybody. They want to go and be pet and everything where the cheetahs are not not so much, you know, yeah. so um, the cheetahs, you know, of course love their trainers, but not a bunch of strangers. So the mm. dog does serve a great role to connect people with the cheetah, but we also do want to focus on the cheetah conservation because the dogs yeah. sometimes will steal the show. So I do. yeah, exactly. So, when we don't have to have a dog, we're going to just do cheetahs together. That's really interesting. Nice. I didn't know that. No, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, big cat person. <laughs> I know you are. I can get the, you away from The more them. I can learn about any cat, the better. So that was like <laughs> really interesting for me. <laughs> keep talking. I yeah, it's so more. cool. But I mean, we had we had the pleasure of seeing um, a, a cheetah oh. at, uh, at San Diego Zoo and the San yeah. Diego Zoo Safari Park. Um, so that was really cool. Yeah. Really, really cool. We had the lion brother and sister as well. Yeah. They were really nice. Oh, it was great. I say they were nice. It's, it's funny how we always <laughs> give animals human traits. Oh, don't they we? were just so yeah. good. They were just so nice. <laughs> like, really? Were they? They're wild animals. <laughs> they're just chilling. <laughs> they're just, yeah, they're just relaxing. Yeah. They're doing their bit. They, they sleep like 20 hours a day. So, yeah, oh, yeah. they're, they're oh. chilling. I wish, I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when it, you you were saying before you uh, you trained as a veterinary, I want to say assistant. technician. Technician. Yeah, Thank like you it. very much. Yeah. So um, what what was that like, and what is what is a sort of a day of a of a veterinarian look like in in San Diego Zoo? Because you were saying before they obviously have lots of different animals to take care of. Um, so yeah, what what is what is something else that they can expect? Yes. Um, and I was lucky enough to work at our veterinary hospital for six months before um, kind of moving into my management role. So um, every day is a little different. We have over 4,000 animals so uh, at the San Diego Zoo, and um, they have a grounds list. So they know if there's any medical cases they need to follow up on. So yeah. we usually have a veterinarian who's our, what we call our, our grounds vet. Um, and they go out on grounds and they do the follow-ups on, you know, if there was a wound or a limp or... Uh, a medical procedure that they need to follow up on. And then there are um, things that go to this, the hospital. Um, some of them are planned, like we might be doing um, a surgery or uh, maybe there's a um, vaccination that needs to happen or something. And then there's emergencies that show up, um, as you can expect with, with animals, things mm -hmm. happen. Um, and so uh, they're prepared to take all of these things on grounds uh, while they also have animals that come through the hospital, maybe patients that need to have long-term care or they're just coming into our um, zoo and they go through a quarantine period where we make sure they're healthy. And so they manage all of those different animals. Um, and each day the keepers all fill out a report that reports back on how their animals are doing. So if you had an animal that had a limp or a lump or something, you would put that on this report. And then that would make the grounds list and the veterinarians would know to come check. If it was an emergency, they would uh, get a radio call and we would ask them to come look at it, uh, you know, as soon as possible. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so every day is new and exciting. And same with being a zookeeper. Every mm. day is different, um, which I think is why you have such a longevity of employees is they just they love to come to work every day. We live in we work in this beautiful environment. You're out with these animals, the plants. We have beautiful weather in San Diego. And then um, every day is, is a new day, a new challenge, a new opportunity. You meet new people and people yeah. are paying. They're paying to come to your work. And so usually they're in a good mood and they're excited and they're on vac vacation. And so, so you have all these people who say, oh, my gosh, that's so cool. And then they reinforce you for what you're doing. And so mm -hmm. it's just a great environment to, to work in. And um, with our veterinarians, of course, it's it's the harder job. Of course, you're taking care of the sick animals. But whenever we have an opportunity, we... Um, 
you know, let the veterinarians feed the animals, especially for our training programs. If they're going to draw blood, you know, you want to have a positive relationship with that person drawing the blood. So after the training or before the training, we'll let them feed a few pieces of their favorite foods and then build that relationship so they have that level of trust um, that, you know, yes, you'll never stop a needle from hurting, but we all get Mm -hmm. shots. And, um, you know, but the lollipop or the, you know, for the kid, uh, you know, it's helpful (laughs) to make it to take a little sting out of there. Of course, most doctors don't do that anymore, but maybe okay. they give a sticker or something fun. But we have, you know, favorite food items that we know are reinforcing for the animals. So so we always try to make sure our veterinarians uh, get a chance to, to have some positive, fun relationships too. Nice. That's good. I love that. And it's, it's the kind of stuff that when you, as a guest, you come to a zoo, you don't really think about it. You don't really think about all of the all the process that goes on behind the scenes Absolutely. and it's 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 so like enlightening even for us like to to be able to emulate that in planet zoo and to hear about it from from first hand from from you as well nikki and it's yeah i think i think that's really special to to sort of tell people more about the profession and and the amount of knowledge behind the zoo and that it's yeah it, it's it takes a lot of people to make the zoo run so many as well people as San Diego you just don't think well. about it yeah yeah, I think it's crazy. yeah. You know, you've seen a lot of zoos do. We're doing like Animal Planet shows to show that yeah. behind the scenes to give people that special eye. Of course, if you come to the zoo, you can usually do a behind the scenes tour or things like that. Um, so we always encourage people to to take a tour if they can. Um, even the bus ride is free with the mission, so you can learn so much more about the intricacies of the yeah. zoo. And um, we do keeper talks throughout the day, and we have special shows that are also free. But you can also pay for that special behind-the-scenes experience if you wanted and really see, like, the inner workings of, of the zoo and the yeah. zoo hospital and, and meet those people who are, you know, boots on the ground, taking care of those animals, and, and just hear their story because there's so much passion that comes out from animal care people taking care of the animals. I mean, we're, we're open 365 days a year. The animals don't yeah. take off, you know, on a holiday. And so... <laughs> You know, they're very dedicated. Um, you know, we have a very good work-life balance when we can, but we also have to cover taking care of the animals, you know, yeah. seven days. A week. So uh, it's, it's a very team-oriented environment. And, um, you know, people jump in and somebody's out sick, you know, somebody will come in on their day off or, you know, they'll divide up an area and, and work together as a team to make sure the animals still get the best care possible. That's lovely. It's really great. Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay. Um, Nikki, can you tell us about why you decided to become a zookeeper? You know, it started when I was in high school. Um, I was trying to figure out which college I wanted to go to, and my um, English teacher would read letters from from college students. He was very yeah. pro college, and so I'd go, oh, "Yeah, maybe I'll go to San Diego State University or something." And then he read this letter from uh, a young man who was in a college. It's now called America's Teaching Zoo. And he talked about getting up at 6 a.m. seven days a week and taking care of all these animals at this college. And I was like, oh, that's where I want to go. <laughs> so I went to America's Teaching Zoo right out of high school. And um, I went up there and I saw a lion, of course. And I thought, okay, I, they have lions. I'm coming. I, just, I want to take care of lions. <laughs> and it was this beautiful male. His name was Chad. He was this beautiful male lion. And I was hooked. Aww. And um, I learned how to take care of big cats and hoofstock and reptiles and birds. And it was only two years, so I really wanted to learn more about the medical side. So that's why I went on to the veterinary technician program after um, Moore Park's America's Teaching Zoo. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we need future zookeepers. I, I see in the chat there there's some zookeepers even listening yes. now. But um, I do want to encourage those young kids, and, and hopefully you'll hear – you know, what a great environment it is to work in and to, to, you know, it's tough. You're out working. It's, it's like, you know, working on a farm, but you get to make a difference in the world, you know, you're teaching people about conserving wildlife. And so we need future zookeepers. So if there's any kids out there playing this game and they really want to make this a career, I highly encourage it. Um, as you can hear, a lot of us that come don't leave. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't find that in the business world. You know, you have a lot of turnover and people move around a lot. Hmm. But working at the San Diego Zoo or another zoo is it's a really rewarding job. And, um, you know, you won't regret it. I can guarantee you. I, I've, I've talked a lot of kids into becoming zookeepers and I've, I've seen them grow up at the zoo coming and now get hired as a zookeeper and just Aww. thrive. And, yeah. So it's a very noble job, I think. 
It absolutely is. We actually we also have um, Crumby Crumble in the chat who says, I'm currently on sick leave, but this game and your speech made me inspired to try again to go work in my local zoo. That's all. Oh, nice. Yay. <laughs> Feel better yeah. soon, Crumby, and definitely do it. <laughs> yes. Yay. And and we're also looking at the uh, the Okapis at the moment. And yes. Oh my goodness. I, I'm a huge cat person. Shante knows this. You know, we, this is why we've become we're Leos, besties. We're we Leos. We know. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, love, love me some cheetahs uh, and some, some leopards. But um, when we met the Okapis at San Diego Zoo, I fell head over heels. They're so cute. And I didn't know any of their story and I didn't know that many facts about them. I didn't and know they were so big. I didn't know they were so huge. I know. <laughs> so they were massive. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that was just so special, um, and that's another just such a great reason to, to you know to come to, just come to so good zoos and, and talk to the talk to the people taking care of the animals and, and the people who know everything because it literally opens your eyes. Um, do you have any any favorite memories uh, from from all your years at San Diego Zoo that really stand out to you that will that will stay with you forever that you would like to share with us? Yeah, you know, I think if I had to, it's, there's been a lot of great memories. I mean, um, I bet. <laughs> but, you know, having that relationship with animals and doing training, I, I say it's the closest thing to actually speaking the same language as an animal. So mm. you teach them, it's like sign language, you know, you teach them cues and criteria. And I have um, an ocelot that I work with that he's still here he's 15 years old and I've worked with him since he was two months old and oh I just took him out yesterday on a walk and when he sees me he rubs on the fence and he greets me in a way he doesn't greet other people and you know that special bond you make with animals it's 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 hard to describe I'm sure if yeah. you have yeah. a dog or a cat at home that greets you but to have these exotic animals who tend to not show the same emotion but when they do show it towards you and that um you know, the amazing ability to teach them things and to watch them learn and explore their habitats and to create new challenges for them. Um, it's just one of my favorite things is to, to get out there and, and to work with all the different species. I was just over at Gorillas this morning oh. um, doing a training session and, you know, every single animal is special. And it's funny that we have like a group of male gorillas and, and the one you know, kind of subordinate male. He tries to show off, but he has his own personality. Like every animal has their own personality. And yeah. And so yeah. we were just talking about him and how he went, like he was trying to show off to his brothers and his brothers were like, they're mellow. So they're like, whatever, dude, go, go away. <laughs> and he's trying, he's like, nobody, nobody wants to join me in this. But I mean, I just, every day I just have a great experience. And I, I, you know, sometimes I'm like peeling myself. Okay, I got to go home. I, I mean, I have three kids and a husband. I got to get my other life. <laughs> but I have to peel myself away sometimes and be like, okay, it's time to go. Like, you know, yeah. here in, in, the, in the States, tomorrow's our Thanksgiving, you know, and, and we're all here working, you know. Oh, wow. Even my boss, he was like, I think I'm going to come into work tomorrow. I'm like, don't come in. Stay home for the holiday. But, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we just, we all love coming here. And, and I think we all make memories every day. And, and you just never know. Like this week is a holiday week for us in, in the States. And right, all right. my friends are out of school and they're all bringing their kids. And so oh, I was great. running around showing them the cheetahs yesterday. And, and we have a cheetah running experience where the cheetahs go off leash and run through this grassy park area in the zoo. And oh, wow. so they, they were all like, oh my God, that was the most amazing thing. And it just reminds <laughs> me like, I get, I get paid for this. I even said that as I was driving them out. I'm like, I actually get paid to do this. So <laughs> I, I love watching the cheetahs run. I just, you know, we have birds that we fly and they, you know, they can take off if they want and they choose to come to the trainers and they fly over to us and, um, you know, we have them fly over the guests' heads and the guests oh, cool. are just amazed to see, you know, all these amazing birds flying. It's like yeah. you're in the forest of the Amazon or, you know, you're getting to see an owl up close flying over your head. So um, I just, I'm so proud when an animal learns a new behavior. I, I, some of those are my favorite accomplishments when I've gotten that blood draw from that tiger and it's taken me six months to clean it and he's yeah. finally you know voluntarily let us do that I just we're all like high-fiving afterwards because <laughs> <it's so> <laughs> that's amazing and and um I know that you uh, have a lot of traditions when it comes to to holidays and stuff we don't we don't celebrate Thanksgiving here are you doing anything right. for the animals as well you know it's funny um they get amazing enriched experiences every day. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. sure they'll get a few extra favorite things, but 
we're pretty careful on what we feed. You know, they have, mm-hmm. we have a nutritionist. We actually have three nutritionists here at the San Diego Zoo in our oh, safari yeah. park. And so we have pretty specific diets, but we do try to make sure we give a special Thanksgiving lunch for all of the, oh, the employees that have to work. Oh, oh and, good. Uh, yeah, we make sure we take care of the employees as well. So we take great care of the animals every day and, yeah. and, and the employees too, but we do try to make it special for the employees <laughs> that have to miss the holiday with their families. Of course. Although they can, you know, join them at night. So yeah. some people like it because they say, then I don't have to cook, you know, in, in, <laughs> cook Small a Thanksgiving moves. turkey. And Fair yeah, yeah. So I was just they get to go home and eat. Oh, sorry. What were you going to say? I just said they get, just get to go home and eat because everyone else cooks for them. Oh. That's good. My dream life. I was going to say, um, (laughs) I was thinking about when you were saying about the birds flying. When we went to San Diego Zoo Safari Park, we saw the most wonderful blue blue bird and I can't remember its name, but it was amazing. (gasps) Right by the front front door. Yes. Hyacinth Macaw. Oh, Big blue oh, oh, what's his yes. name? Oh, he was so smart he, and he I've was got, dancing for us. I've got so many videos where we, we were like applauding him because yeah. we had the feeling that he appreciated the attention. So he gathered sure a small crowd and we were clapping and he was like waving at us. Oh, it was amazing. Showing his trick. Oh, that was really cool. <laughs> yes. They're super smart birds. I love macaws. I used to have six macaws when I was growing up as a child, which is oh, probably why I'm a zookeeper and, a, and an animal say. person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're raised to do this, born to do this. (laughs) I I think of hyacinths as like the Great Dane of of macaws. Yeah. Great Danes are kind of mellow. They're not like the chihuahua that's a spaz, you know, Mm. they're mellow. Hyacinths are just so big and powerful. They're just kind of mellow. Other macaws, you know, can be more bitey and Mm. you've got to be careful. But hyacinth macaws are just like big puppy dogs in a way. They're just, you know, you got to be careful. That beak is super powerful. But um, I've just, I've loved working with hyacinths over the years. So nice. Um, and I know you are super, super busy. You've just told us all about your, your day-to-day activities and uh, all, of, all of the stuff that you and, and your team do. Um, have you had any chance to have a look at Planet Zoo or play the game? <laughs> what do you think about it? You know, it's funny. I did look at the trailer, and I have played similar games like this in the past, but it, nice. it felt so much like work. Like, I was like... <laughs> You know, it, it's a great game. I love it. And um, I love your habitat setup. I mm. feel like it's so naturalistic looking and, and reflects how, you know, we try to set up our habitat. So I love that. But it, it feels like I'm working when I do the game. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to get a real life experience, I think the game is a great way to really feel like what it feels like working at a zoo for sure. So absolutely, I wish it the best success because not everyone can be a zookeeper, but this game gives them that outlet to really see the whole picture. Like you were saying, it's hard to realize how much goes into that, but, you know, managing people and keeping people happy and keeping yeah. the animals happy and, and making sure your barriers are set up good and you have the right food. It's very realistic. So yes, I think it's a great game. Thank you. <laughs> That's very kind. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we are inspired by you know, zoos like, like, like yours and, and the safari park and all the amazing work that, that you do and, and, you know, the conservation efforts you were telling us about. It's, it's a global effort and, and it's, it's nice to be a, a, small, a small part of that as well and, and help spread the awareness at least for, uh, for many species. Um, yeah, every, every little bit helps. Everyone out there yeah. can do their part. So if it's just turning off the lights, turning off the water, recycling your plastic bottle, not using plastic, you know, joining a zoo's conservation efforts, um, donating to your favorite conservation organization, everyone can make a difference. And if everyone does one little thing, it will make a huge impact in the whole world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, And if you would like to have a chance at winning, uh, winning, (laughs) if you'd like to have a chance at winning, would you like to have a chance at winning? Yes, I would like to have a chance at winning. If you'd like to have a chance uh, to visit San Diego Zoo, uh, they have kindly provided us two tickets to San Diego, is it San Diego Zoo? San Diego Safari? San Diego Zoo? San Diego Zoo. San Diego Zoo. Um, in, of course, San Diego. So if you would like to go, uh, then please, what should I put in the chat, Shante? Say, thanks, Nikki. I think that's nice. Yes, thanks, Nikki, <laughs> in the chat. We will give you a few minutes um, while we play this beautiful video in the background as well. Uh, and then after a few minutes, we're going to pick a winner. And uh, do know that we are not paying for uh, expenses on this one, but we are providing the tickets. So if you are local to the US or if you are next year, maybe 
going to America, Visiting, yeah. why not? You should go. It's a lovely country, lovely people. Um, and, you know, perhaps you have the chance to, to meet amazing people such as Nikki uh, and talk to them and ask them about, uh, you know, their amazing work um, at San Diego Zoo. So thank you very much to uh, Nikki and to San Diego Zoo for, for giving us a lovely prize and also for talking to us today. It was super, super exciting and interesting to, to hear more uh, from from your side, from outside of the game, because obviously that's what we see. That's every what we talk day. about now, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we talk about. Um, so it's it's nice to hear uh, how it how it sort of resonates with you and how our game was inspired by by everything that you do. So thank you very much, Nikki, for for all of that. Very welcome. Thank you for having me, and we'll see you at the zoo. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're so yeah, that was that was Nikki. Thank you, Nikki. Keep putting it in the chat. Um, obviously, I think it's what is it, 10 a.m., 11 a.m. in San Diego. Yeah, I believe so. So she still has a whole day ahead of her. And as she was saying in the chat uh, before, she already went to check on the gorillas. So she must start super, super early. Um, and and wow, I I'm kind of envious. We had. Well, I, I mean, I should have been a zookeeper. <laughs> when we went, I mean, we we were definitely there quite early. Yeah, we went at like 7 a.m. So right and before the And they were the busy. Opens. They were yeah. ramping it up big time. They were, they were running around, like making sure everything was ready to go for the day ahead. And like, I was like, I need to go back to bed. It's, it's too early. <laughs> <laughs> it's 7 a.m. I know. <laughs> but it was an amazing experience getting to go to San Diego for one yeah. and then getting to visit the San Diego Zoo and San Diego Zoo Safari Park. We can, I can take this off now. I just realized I'm just listening oh, yeah. to, to you with my headphones on. Yeah, honestly, uh, I cannot recommend um, San Diego Zoo enough. If you want to learn more about them as well, do check out their social channels and their official websites. They've got so many amazing uh, conservation efforts and information um, on, on all of their, uh, their channels. It, honestly, it's really, really interesting and, and they do such great work. Um, I just I cannot gush about them enough. Uh, we were super taken with with all of the people that Absolutely. we had a chance to chat to. Um, it was incredibly inspiring, and it's just it's just nice to be able to extend it beyond the game, to extend it beyond Planet Zoo, um, and learn so much more about the real world that we live in. Um, and then you know, for some relaxation, come back to Planet Zoo and and make your own zoo in there. Um, has anyone ever tried making San Diego Zoo? In oh Planet yeah, Zoo. if you have, let us know. I want to see. I want to see if you've done some habitats, or if you were inspired by something that you've seen on their on their channel, or if you're if you're building the entire zoo. Please tell us uh, and and do share it with us. I'd love to see it. I um. That's, that's you sound so strange now. I've taken my headphones off. I know. I'm like I'm I getting thought, used I to like, like maybe I was like underwater. And now I'm hearing <laughs> clear again. Like when you start yeah. talking, I was like looking at you. Like They're, is that what you sound like? I know. It's so <laughs> weird. I took them off and I was like, I'm so muffled. I must shout. <laughs> I can't hear anything. It's yes. so weird wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, we had a, I think we've had a great stream. Thanks, I, to, honestly, thanks to Nikki and I, to I love San Diego this. Zoo for joining us. Really, really special. And uh, hopefully, you know, we know that not everyone can make their way uh, to, to an amazing zoo such as San Diego Zoo or, or another zoo. Um, so hopefully we were able to share some of that real life passion that they real have. Insight. Um, and, and the insight into, into what it's like to, to run a zoo or to work at a zoo. And, you know, as she was saying, it's a team effort. Um, everyone, and, and honestly, it is every single person uh, is so passionate and they're all there for that same common goal of, of making the world a better place for our animals. So. I felt like we learned so much. We were there, we were there for, Buzzing. we went to San Diego Zoo for one day and San Diego Zoo Safari Park for the next day. And I have retained so much information, but then if you quiz yeah. me on it, I'm terrible. But <laughs> I was like going to say, you are putting yourself on the spot right no, now. No, but it's like, you know, like, <laughs> if somebody has a trivia fact, I'm like, I know that. <laughs> I went to San Diego I, I got yeah, that. I talked about this. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very exciting. That's but, super yeah. interesting. And it's an incredibly special job. So we'll give you 30 more seconds. So put thanks, Nikki, in the chat. Uh, and then we will pick a winner and we will send you some San Diego Zoo tickets. We've got two tickets for one winner to give away. So you can take your friend, your mom, your brother, your sister, anyone. We don't mind. We just want you to have a lovely experience. Um, to we go, should to reiterate that them. it is just the tickets. We it are not is paying the tickets. for expenses. No. Um, that so was if you are place. able to get to um, San Diego anyway, then yes. great. Please, please <laughs> post in the chat. Thanks, Nikki, for a chance to win Yay. two tickets. I would love to go back. You might want to have to refresh. Okay. It's probably refresh the chat time. 
Um, yeah, I, I would, I'd love to go again. It would be my dream. It was, Maybe we was can set up an annual uh, meet up there. <laughs> Nikki, if you're still watching, do you do community meets? <laughs> like, let us know. Uh, I'd love to come back. No, it'd be an absolute pleasure. Yeah. I mean, it was an absolute pleasure, definitely. So it is something that if you have the opportunity to go, definitely take it. It's yeah. amazing. Um, yeah, and I think we will be we will be talking to San Diego Zoo uh, another time. Um, they they're keen to, to you know to keep keep in touch with us. We have an ongoing uh, sort of partnership that we um, that we've set up with them. So uh, hopefully we will we will hear some more. If not from Nikki, then from someone else who works there and is uh, probably equally as passionate about what they do. Um, a community meet at San Diego would be incredible, <laughs> says Joel. Thanks, I Nikki. Post agree. it in the chat. Thanks, Nikki. Doesn't matter how many times you post no. it. We'll stop it now. We'll stop it. I want to pick a winner. Stop putting it in the chat. Are you ready to pick a winner? I have some tea. Okay. It's up to me. <laughs> <laughs> up to Seb you. G needs to go. He says bye. Bye, Seb bye. G. He doesn't want to win. I don't know if Cyril's saying bye or if they're saying, saying bye, bye to, to Seb, Seb G. G. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, all right. Uh, this one? Is that a winner? <laughs> <laughs> let me let me do the the random selection. All right, random. I'm not going to look. Give me Don't a look. number. Wait, what? Don't say four. Seventeen. Seventy. I'm scrolling. The winner is Miss Nightingale. Congratulations, Congratulations Miss Nightingale. Miss Nightingale. Woo, what do they have to do to claim their tickets? Please send us an email to community at frontier.co.uk. That is community at frontier.co.uk uh, with your details such as uh, I don't know I don't, your name, you need an address <laughs> probably to send them the tickets. We'll probably need your number as well in case there's any uh, any updates that we need to give you, such as. Uh, when we type your name into the tickets, yep. uh, they might ask Email for your passwords. phone. Email passwords. <laughs> Pin number. No. Pin numbers. Everything. Please send don't, us, don't your, send us your name, your address, and your phone number, and we will get that all sorted for you. Miss Nightingale. Yay. Please uh, send us an email to community at frontier.co.uk. Yay. This is Miss uh, Nightingale. Yay. And I love our community. Instead of going grumpy, everyone's always like, congrats. congrats. We're so happy for you. Um, of course, we will we'll continue doing fun streams. We are going to be back next week, Wednesday, at 7 p.m. UTC. I believe it's the, that's at the 4th of December already. Don't say that. It's, it's going to be really. December. It's going to be December. Oh, I'm so scared. OK, so uh, at the end of this week or on Monday, we're going to be posting the, the streaming, streaming schedule. schedule for December. So next week, Wednesday, 7 p.m., it's going to be another career Let's Play. Uh, it's going to be, I believe, with myself and senior designer David Bamber. He's going to help us through level three. That's where we are now, the third scenario. Um, also, if you hadn't noticed yet, if you haven't opened the game yet today, we did release up update 1.0.3 today. And how many fixes does it have, Shante? Over 400, would you believe or not? Also, we a should highlight that our community were saying that they wanted a few uh, features in sandbox mode. And we have added those too, so definitely check out the patch notes. You yes. Have, oh. There was like a weird dusty hair that was like, it was like floating here, but it wasn't. It was just my hair, hair out the corner of my eye. <laughs> anyway, so please read that update on the forums, update 1.0.3 that went out earlier today. So definitely, um, if you haven't updated already. It's so good. The team, uh, the, the Planet Zoo team have done such an amazing job working on this update. So much has gone into it. We are very excited and of course, um, we're, we're not finished. We are still uh, listening to all of your feedback and we are still looking at what we can do to help you. So um, we are here for you. So please do talk to us on the forums, on social media. Um, if you have any more issues, then do check them on the issue tracker uh, so, so that our QA team and our customer support team can look into it as well and help you as soon as possible. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. Do tune in next week, Wednesday, for the uh, next Career Mode Let's Play. If you are not following the Career Mode story and you don't want spoilers, then skip to the next week, which I believe is a Workshop Wonderland with the lovely Shantae. Um, but yeah, I hope to see you all in the chat next week. Uh, we are so excited to, to have talked to San Diego Zoo today, honestly. Oh, absolutely. It was oh, what special. a privilege. It's like, 
It's like a dream that never ends. We got to go, and now we get to speak to them more. So it's and just, they're just so inspiring. It's lovely. I, it's, I'm literally reconsidering all my life choices just to. Oh, when she when go. she was giving that speech about becoming a zookeeper, I was like, top, maybe. Nikki, you're amazing. You did Absolutely. awesome, and uh, we were so honoured to talk to you today. Thank you again so much for coming on uh, and joining the stream today. Thank you again for everyone watching, um, and we hope to see you next week, Wednesday, at 7 p.m. See you later. Bye, Bye. everyone.